Hey guys, Lana Mechanics here, and today your video is coming early. This is the first of two videos that will be posted today. I had, had some time laying around, so I said, why not? So, this is going to be the chrome baler inspection video. Um, so, basically, what we're going to be going over here is um, things that you should look at before it's hooked up to the tractor the tying system, the chain system over here. The uh, pickup, make sure no teeth are broken off. Uh, the power takeoff shaft, the hydraulic lines, um, everything. You should just look for that stuff. Um, so this is going to be in the first video, and then in the second video, um, it's going to we're going to hook the 1520 up. We're going to turn the baler on, make sure we don't hear any um, out of the ordinary noises, and I'll explain what you should and what you shouldn't hear. And we're going to get everybody set to go to the field. Now this is going to kind of be um, if you're looking to buy a used baler or a used chrome baler. Um, so we're going to go ahead and get into this and let's go ahead. And hey guys, West Virginia Farmer here. Um, yes, I have two channels now. Go over and subscribe to me. This video will be uploaded to it soon. So let's go ahead and get into this video right here. Start discussing this and uh, show you what you need to look for. So this is a um, 2002 Chrome KR125 Baylor, as I said, and uh, this has over 7,000 bales on it right now. So it's baled with a lot of hay. Um, so when you have a baler that's 20 years old, about a lot of hay, um, you need to look extra close for any parts that could be um, off or not working correctly. And this Chrome Baylor eats hay like a bad habit. I mean, it is a mean, lean, hay-eating machine. I'm telling you. It just eats and eats and eats and eats uh, hay. You can bail pretty much as fast as you want to, unless, of course, you have a nose-to-nose -nose horsepower. <clears throat> Wonder who has that, Bryson. Anyway, so what I mean by nose-to-nose -nose horsepower, this baler requires a 48 horsepower output at the PTO, and this tractor is 48 horsepower at the PTO, so they're meeting nose to nose. There's no room, so I got a bail in third gear and about two to three miles an hour. So, yeah, you're gonna have to bail a little slow, but if you have a little bit of bigger tractor, you can probably bail five, six mile an hour with this thing and just eat it up. It eats it in third gear on that tractor and just make your bails a little bit slower. And I'll t I'll go in more in depth of that in the other video. All right, so first thing you want to inspect when you're getting ready to go to the field is make sure you have all your twine uh, threaded through and uh, fixed in properly so that you don't have any tying issues. Make sure everything is routed good down through here to the rollers and uh, make sure um, them springs are tightened to the proper length and make sure your feed system uh, is in good shape make sure your twine is and most importantly make sure your twine is in good shape um, so you can tie in another one once one runs out and all will be good so the baler will pull from two uh, baskets of twine which it's pulling from this one right here and it's going to pull from this one over here mm -hmm. now once you tie in this and both of these two are out, you'll tie in these two, which they'll pull from them as well. So make sure everything, all the they're routed through the eyelets up here, and everything is in working order because these things are a pain if you screw up your tying mechanism. It's not good. Next thing. So right here, this is your hydraulic line. Now, this may look a little weird to y'all, but this um, is a, a Pioneer adapter. Um, we had to buy this back in two, 2002 because the tractor has old style John Deere hookups on it. And I'll explain to you about that in the other video when we do the video of the bale and the tractor together. But long story short, this has got, you had to have this Pioneer adapter to go into that tractor. And like I said, we'll go more in depth with that. Make sure your hydraulic line is fittings are tight, not leaking or anything of that sort. Make sure your hose is in good shape. This is stored inside, it's been stored inside all of its life. So um, the hydraulic hose is, is, is original. 
and so um, it's still in pretty good shape. Make sure your drive shaft is in good shape. Make sure it's not beat up or anything like that. Um, make sure that this is in good shape because this is rotating down here and if this gets caught, you'll get a screw up. So make sure your um, line holder is in good shape there. That's it for the front of this uh, in here and the hydraulic. Right here, make sure everything's in good shape. Make sure your tying mechanism is in good shape, and we'll go over more of the tying when it's on the tractor. I can do a little bit better explaining them. Make sure these hydraulic rails are in good shape. Make sure the hydraulic switch is in good shape because you can turn this to let the uh, table down, which is the pickup, or you can turn this to let the gate back up there open up. Um, now let's get on to your hitch pin and stuff to make sure it's in good shape. Okay, so your hitch pin down here, you want to make sure it's not worn out and make sure it's not, um, um, it's got to have a little bit of wiggle room for this baler uh, to move in between, but it shouldn't uh, be wired in at the top up here. So there's that part of that. And you know what? Heck with it. I'm going to go ahead and we're going to hook up the 1520 of this. We're going to make this all one video. All right, let's fire her up. Battery on. All right, let's get her. Oh, shoot. Drop that pin. Drop the pin. This pin put in here. Pins put in. Now let's get the power takeoff hooked up. That's a back camera view. Farmers will never pain on that. Alright. Hydraulics. Now, 
what I'm talking about. I'm gonna hook up this hydraulic here. If I hooked up just a regular hydraulic end on this, it wouldn't go in. So I have to have this one here. So that's what you have to do with that. So it's back down here. Just gonna pull back on this collar. Shove it in. You're good and locked. Now, all you'll want to do now is take this, which is the tire string, and wrap it wherever your easiest designated place is. So once you get that wrapped around your post, whatever you may have, uh, crank the jack down, tongue weight on the rest of the tractor. And then pull this little lever up and over. Lock the jack up. Make sure it's good and locked. Not moving. And then you're pretty much ready to rumble bumble. So. Everything is hooked up. Now, you don't need that right there, really. Um, so all you basically need is this, and you're ready to hook up. So now we're gonna pull the bailer out just a bit. All right. So once you got it all hooked up and ready to go to the tractor, um, now when I turn this thing on, you're gonna hear a loud noise which is just the bailer turning. Um, we're going to listen for any um, weird noises. We're going to listen for any burning smells. We're going to listen. Um, so we're going to start the bailer when it's um, turning at low idle. Then we're going to throttle it up, tractor up just a little bit. We're going to stop the bailer. Then we're going to turn it on. And then we're going to go over horsepower uh, requirements. All right. We're going to engage the PTO. There's a little bit of squeaking, which is which is um, a normal thing uh, for when these first start up. And then, as you saw, as I ran a little bit more and I throttled it up just a little bit, um, the baler worked all the squeak out, which is, means the oil was replenished in those rollers up there. Um, so that's what that uh, major squeaking, burning smells, and um, anything that's out of the ordinary. Um, is what you're going to listen for. And that normal crone bang noise is perfect. That is that means the baler is operating correctly, and everything is in normal um, normal mode, and everything's working good. Um, as you saw, the teeth were moving. I hope you saw that the teeth were moving, and um, all that stuff was working properly. Power takeoff shaft was spinning just fine. The baler was turning just fine. Again, squeaking will start when the baler is first turned on. If it's squeaking doesn't go away, oil your chains. Because uh, that's the problem there. And them chains up there are just not the chains um, that need to be taken care of. Um, over here, on both sides, there was a set of chains. So we're going to open up these doors here with the screwdriver provided with the baler. Open that up. Pull the door open. You have your big main cog here. This drives the uh, pickup and the um, tying system. You want to make sure there's no major slack. There's going to be a little bit. That's normal for a baler. 
Um, this baler has over, like I said, um, I don't remember, like 8,000 bales, I, th I think that's what I said. And uh, we currently have 97 off first cutting. Every time this bell door ejects, you're gonna, you're gonna notice that. So when this bell door ejects, um, we're not gonna eject open the bell door tonight because the neighbors are sleeping and it's like seven o'clock. So um, yes, that's about it. For this side, you have your springs that run your pickup and everything normally. Make sure there's no major slack in the chains. And if you just take a screwdriver here normally and just clean out them chains, because you're not, they're going to get dusty. It's a round baler. Yeah, there's going to be a lot of dirt and dust and debris. So that is it for this side of the baler um, on the left side of the tractor up there. I'm going to come over to this side of the tractor and you're going to open up this door. Come on, you frazzling thing. Okay. Whew. See, this is exactly what you got to look for here. Look at all this stuff. Clean that out of there. That's got to get, you know, you can't have all that stuff rotating around the cogs and stuff and getting in these chains. This chain is in good shape. It's good and tight. Uh, there's a grease fitting through this hole here. And look at all this. And got to get this thing cleaned out, but we're getting ready to go into second cutting, so no real use. And just look at all this mess. That's all the dirt that you get from baling 95 bales um, after you clean them. Make sure the springs and everything are good, hydraulic lines and everything are good, and make sure the cable is ev and everything is good here to the pickup. <laughs> 2014, I was just little. Um, I had great handwriting for my age. I was really advanced um, in my class. Um, normally you don't hear that a lot out of people but hey I was pretty advanced for my age at that time so yeah anyway that's going to be it for today guys and also one more thing I totally about forgot horsepower requirements okay this John Deere 1520 is 55 engine horsepower and this Crone KR 125 requires 48 horsepower now you may be saying okay that is a good uh seven or eight uh horsepower in between if you think that you're wrong because guess what that's not the actual horsepower of this tractor by the time that it runs the hydraulic pump power steering pump the transmission you're going to lose you're going to have a loss this tractor puts out 48 horsepower at the PTO. This barrel requires 48 horsepower at the PTO. Okay. That's the thing I love about chrome balers. They require low power input, which is awesome uh, for this tractor. Again, I have to bail extremely slow. We have to bail uh, probably about two to three miles an hour uh, in third gear and first range on the tractor and full throttle. Now, if I was bailing nothing, I could run it pretty fast. But when you get a bale and you're sucking hay in and it's making that bale inside of this, you're taking more off your tractor than you realize, okay? So, when you do that, you got to realize, if I'm going to buy a 48 horsepower PTO horsepower tractor, I need to have a less horsepower baler. Because when you get to rolling a bale in there, it's going to be harder on it. But this old 1520, it's a deer. She can get her done. She's got her done for the past 20 years. And it's still going to keep doing it. 